So I've never watched regular show before. This is a really popular TV show that most people swear is one of Cartoon Network's best creations. The people who love regular show really love it, and the people who hate regular show don't exist. Everyone likes this. I actually have a bit of a funny history with this cartoon because despite never seeing a single full episode, I get told that I sound like Mordecai, like all the time. Now granted, this is usually from an online friend who hears my voice through a horribly compressed USB microphone and a Discord call set to a region none of us live in. And I'll be honest, even though I'm biased, I don't really hear the similarities. But other than that one silly bit of Darcy trivia, my life has been pretty regular show free. Now I know to most of you that's a crime and I should get the death penalty immediately, but hear me out because today I'll be doing the old reliable and watching one of the show's earlier episodes and then directly comparing it to one of the show's later episodes. Never been done before. I know. So not only is this my first time really watching this stuff, but hopefully I noticed the differences between seven odd years of content. Also, I might take a peek at something special regarding the show at the very end, so stay tuned for that, I guess. Our first episode is called The Power. I'm pretty sure this is the actual first ever episode of Regular Show, so the fact that I don't know anything works great here. We start our adventure with Rigby. He's a raccoon. I think. <laughs> His wiki page describes him as a wild adult who becomes frustrated, frightened, confused, and sad very easily. So far, the show is super relatable. Rigby is wrestling what I can only describe as a Hulk Hogan plushie from Wish. He does a flying elbow drop into a senton, into a failed sleeper hold. As an actual wrestling fan, I can confirm this is epic. We then meet our second main character. His name is Mordecai. You might recognize his voice from... Me. Mordecai is a bird. His wiki describes him as laid back, big hearted, and pretty much like Rigby, except he's smarter and has more patience. Generally in these episodes, I'm pretty sure Mordecai is like the voice of reason, I think. Anyway, Mordecai is all in on this wrestling match. He gets tagged in and the boys work together to do some crazy double team thing. <laughs> Wow, it's just like real wrestling. So things take a turn when Rigby and Mordecai realize that because of their shenanigans, there's a hole in their drywall. Mordecai says something like they're 23 years old, so busting holes in walls isn't a good look, which actually, I will say, it's kind of refreshing for the main characters of a Cartoon Network show to be older than 15 for once, even if they all act the exact same. <laughs> so Mordecai comes up with a plan to ask his and Rigby's boss for a raise. That way they can spend the extra money to hire someone else to fix the hole. Genius. Rigby immediately shuts that idea down and suggests something way more efficient and modern. Rigby says they should approach their boss while ham boning. Ham boning. We both want raises. Ham boning. What are you, 65? Ham boning. If you're a normal person and have never heard of ham boning, as far as I can tell, it's basically just using your body as a drum set and slapping yourself to make a sick beat. I think they both agree that's kind of a silly idea. So a backup to the backup, and Rigby pulls out a magical scarlet red ultra gaming razor keyboard. So it turns out he stole the piano from this wizard guy. I'm not sure if he's like a reoccurring character or not. So let me know if he is in the comments. It helps a bunch, seriously, please do it. So I stated earlier, this mini keyboard is actually magical, although the boys don't know it yet. Mordecai names it The Power. And just like that, the mystical forces of the animation team etch the new name in the middle of the top plate. I'd like to point out that the magic text that just appeared clearly changes places in like the very next scene, but this is a cartoon, so who really gives a shit? So Rigby and Mordecai are dancing to the music from the mini keyboard and rehearsing their plea for a raise when we're introduced to a new character. His name is Pops. He's got a silly head and from what I can tell, he's just, he's just kind of a weirdo. <laughs> Let's use the power on Pops. I don't know. Pops is kind of weird. <laughs> Despite this, the guys give their little dance a test run on him, and Pops gets kind of excited afterwards and then gives them lollipops. Take from that what you want. I personally deem that scene inconclusive evidence on the basis that Pops probably has a lack of oxygen going to his brain. Anyway, it's finally time for Mordecai and Rigby to try and sweet talk their boss with a little song and dance. Their boss's name is Benson, and from what I read online, he's very short tempered and sometimes just a dick. Here goes nothing. What are you doing? Give us a raise, loser! Two seconds later. How's 20 bucks sound? Right. So because Benson was generous and actually gave them a raise, Rigby finally finds out that the power is magical. There's no way Benson would have gave them a raise otherwise. Turns out as long as they're playing the piano, they can just make anything happen. So of course we get the mandatory quick montage where they get a bouncy house, fly off into the void, get a fanny pack. Holy, this thing is really powerful. But then another character shows up. His name is Skips. I think he's a Yeti? He's got the same build as the Yeti from Monsters, Inc. So I'm gonna go with he's a Yeti. I don't know much about this guy, but what's important is that he catches Mordecai and Rigby in the act and sees them spawning a bunch of stuff. The boys get kind of nervous, so they decide to turn the song on and come up with some lyrics to get Skips to go away. It's time for you to go to your room. It's time for you to go to the moon. 
Did you just send Skips to the moon? Isn't that what you said? No, room! I sent him to his room, not the moon, you idiot! Turns out Rigby accidentally sent Skips to the moon, so now they have to go get him back. And if you're wondering why they can't just wish him back with the piano, that's because it, quote, doesn't work that way. So, yeah, there you go. Benson and Pop show up again and ask if anyone knows where Skips is. We then get this hilariously quick bit that's too funny not to show right now. Hey, have you two seen Skips? Rigby sent him to the moon. So the only real solution here is for everyone to go to the moon and hopefully find skips and then everyone can return back safely. So how do they do this? Of course, everyone gets in a golf cart and just one song later, the rest of the gang is on the moon. But something's a little fishy here. Turns out that there's just a lot of random crap on the moon already. Was this NASA covering top secret information from the public? Was it Elon Musk testing the astrobiological limits of the human development? Or was it Rigby being stupid? It was it was Rigby being stupid. A bunch of baby ducks send them to the moon. So do machine that doesn't work. Send them to the moon. Anyway, they find Skips, but alongside them, they also find a giant moon monster who's about to destroy them all. So Rigby is about to play a sick song to stop the monster, but just like every iPhone, after two years, the battery dies. But then, again, Rigby has an epiphany and suddenly realizes what he needs to do. There can only be one solution. Hambony will save your life someday. It'll be all like, what? You trying to mug me? I know what to do. You're goddamn right. So Rigby ham bones the monster who then drops Skip, which allows everyone to get away just in time. Truly an epic cartoon moment. They plug the golf cart into the mini keyboard, which gives it more battery life, which allows everyone to return back home safe and sound. Sadly, now everyone knows about the magical piano, so Skip's breaks it in half, Benson gets his $40 back from earlier, and Mordecai and Rigby are tasked with cleaning up the entire room. It's not all bad though, because we do get a little moment of redemption with the final scene of this episode. Do you think Benson noticed it? He won't now. Absolutely genius. Overall, this episode was actually really good. I genuinely laughed at a lot of moments. And what can I say? Shit slaps. Whoa. But how does that all compare to an episode way later in the series? Well, no better way than to just find out. This episode is called D's Keys. This is an episode during the tail end of season seven, which would actually line up perfectly with the D's Nuts meme being at the height of its popularity. Not sure if they're connected. It's just something I noticed. We start this episode with Rigby and Mordecai. I guess they live in some sort of dome now. Not sure what's going on there. Mordecai starts beatboxing and Rigby starts rapping about how they got a pizza. Important to mention that they used Benson's car to get the pizza and he has no idea. Basically, they stole his keys. We then immediately get this episode's conflict when this happens. Keys! So now Rigby and Mordecai have to spend their day trying to get these keys back because otherwise Benson will get really mad or something. I, I don't know. So as a first time viewer, this next scene is actually really interesting. Basically, Mordecai asks these scientists if they could go into the room where the keys are and just get them for him. But the scientists tell him that they're technically not allowed to interact with the test subjects. I'm not sure if that's a throwaway comment or if that actually means something, but that kind of makes me think that at one point in the story, the main gang got exposed to regular humans and now they're like isolated from the rest of the world. Maybe they think they're freaks or something. I could be wrong. Who knows? That's just a theory. Anyway, it turns out the keys landed in a very high security area. So they're going to be a really big pain to get back. However, Mordecai bribes the scientist with pizza. So the scientists say, okay, we'll help you out. Long story short, the scientists won't be able to actually retrieve the keys themselves, but they should be able to guide Mordecai and Rigby through every step of the way. Surely nothing bad will happen. Lucky for you, our top minds will guide you through it. <laughs> pizza. <laughs> yeah. So first they use a drone to distract the guards and it's very effective. Now the plan begins. Step one, getting in through the door. Rigby checks his bag and finds a Ziploc with a pair of reusable teeth inside it. Despite that being incredibly disgusting, he's forced to put them in his mouth, which lets him bypass the dental recognition lock. Step two, get to the second floor. Mordecai spots an elevator, so they just take that. <laughs> Pretty uneventful step, honestly, but we do get this funny bit during it. Why do you still have those teeth in your mouth? Eh? You're kind of growing on me. Step three, pass through the laser hallway. The scientists are confident that Mordecai and Rigby will survive as long as they do exactly as they say. This segment is basically just like that one level in Crash Bandicoot where you're running away from a giant rock. The scientists tell them when to duck, jump, and roll, and ultimately our boys make it to the end of the hallway. No problem. Step four, pass the motion detectors. So this step's very important. The scientists explain to be cautious because the slightest error in movement and the whole operation is blown. Mordecai and Rigby have to move very, very slow. Also, there's facial recognition scanners, so they're told they have to constantly change their facial expression to not get detected. If that sounds like some classic cartoon bullshit, it's because it is, and the scientists are just straight up fucking with them. Change! 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 Take a screenshot. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> 
Dude, they're just messing with us. Final step, get through the door. The final door has an incredibly difficult keypad to crack apparently, so Mordecai checks his bag and finds a suction cup laser thing. He has to lick it and then stick it on the door, which then cuts a hole out for them to walk through. And now they're at the keys. They did it. Everything went surprisingly well, and there's nothing else that could possibly go wrong. What a good episode. The pedestal was trapped, and now there's a replica planet Earth rolling towards them. <laughs> Right. At least now it really is like that Crash Bandicoot level. So this planet ball thing has motion tracking in it and actually follows the guys around every corner. They go back through every single trap they carefully went through on their way in. They even go through a new room that's basically just a maze, but reminds me of that one mini clip game where you have to fit a rotating cube into a hole. Anyway, they have an Among Us moment and jump through a vent. And thanks to some handy jetpacks just laying around, Rigby and Mordecai are able to safely escape with the keys in hand. Honestly, that whole escape segment was really cool and you should watch it in full if you can find it online somewhere. The boys then try to give the keys back to Benson, but because his car is actually in perfect shape, Benson tells him to just hold on to the keys for the rest of the day in case they just want to go out again, being nice for some reason. This episode ends with what I can only imagine is an extremely classic Rigby move. You thinking what I'm thinking? Pizza run! Whoops! Ah. <laughs> Really, dude? And that's it. That's regular show. Now, I do have one more thing that I want to explore about this show real quick. But before I do, massive spoiler warning, because I'm basically going over the ending of the entire series. So if you're in the middle of the show or just haven't seen it yet, feel free to skip to the timestamp on the screen to avoid getting spoiled. So I never usually do this with shows I watch, but I randomly decided to have a peek at the very last episode of the entire series, just to see what it was like. And although I've never watched the show, so I don't really understand anything that's happened during all the epic moments, there's like a two minute montage at the very end where all the characters grow old and are shown doing what I can only imagine is something they love to do. Mordecai is painting, Rigby has a family, I think, the rest of the characters have smiles on their faces, all as they age together. At the very, very end, we skip 25 years later and get one final conversation between Rigby and Mordecai about wanting to play video games together. We get a slow pan out zoom and a shot of an old television with a VHS tape labeled regular show exiting the TV. And then it just ends. That's it. That's the ending. Like I said, I don't usually talk about the true ending of these shows, but after watching that, it really just seemed like a show that came full circle and really delivered to its fans. It's rare nowadays for a cartoon to properly show its appreciation for the support it got throughout its years, but the final scene there really felt like a big thank you. And for that, I applaud it, because it seems like a very difficult thing to do. Anyway, yeah, that's the end of the video. The regular show was actually really good. I didn't notice too much of a difference between the early and late episodes, to be honest, but maybe I just got lucky with the ones I watched. I don't know. This is genuinely one of my favorite shows I've covered in a while, because it seriously looks like something I would watch one day. Sadly, I don't really have time to watch eight full seasons of a show right now, but catching an episode here and there might be on my schedule. Who knows? Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please watch my other videos. I've got a bunch just like this. Check out the full playlist. It's on screen right now, probably. Paul Abdul scores this one a solid five hand bone slaps out of five. And yeah, thanks for watching. Rigby sent him to the moon.